Good afternoon and welcome everyone uh, to the Meridian Chamber of Commerce's Idaho Primary Election Candidate Forum. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have a chock full uh, agenda for you. Um, and we all know that we would rather be doing this in person, uh, meeting the candidates, asking questions, uh, but under the current circumstances, we are making the best of the situation. I'd like to mention that uh, this wouldn't be possible without the Government Affairs Committee of the Meridian Chamber of Commerce and our Chamber Board. And I'd like to give a special shout out and thank you to our committee chairmen, John Berg and Mark Freeman for helping us pull together this program and come up with the questions that we have posed to all of the candidates uh, in the questionnaire. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, introduce myself. I'm Sean Evans. I'm the President and CEO of the Meridian Chamber of Commerce, and I'll be one of your moderator moderators today, along with Ryan Sutt, reporter with the Meridian Press. Hello, Ryan. Hello. One of the important things that we want to make sure we get across today is the fact that we are doing absentee ballot uh, voting uh, for this primary election. Due to the current state of emergency in Idaho surrounding the coronavirus, the May 19th primary election will be held by absentee ballot only. You can request your absentee ballot online at idahovotes.gov, and you can also download, print, and mail this request form to your county clerk's office uh, by May 19th. Request your ballots by May 19th, and in order for your vote to be counted, you must return your ballot to the county clerk's office by June 2nd, 2020. I would like to take just a brief moment uh, to recognize the loss of some of our, uh, one of our house colleagues, uh, your house colleagues, uh, Representative Stevenson from Lewiston. Our thoughts and prayers go out to her family. So very sorry for, for your loss of, the, of that colleague. Joining us today on our forum, uh, we have candidates for Idaho legislature, State Senate District 14, State Senate District 21, House District 14, House Seat B, House District 20, House Seat A, House District 21, House Seat B, House District 22, House Seat A, and House District 22, House Seat B. We also have later in the, in the program, candidates for 80 County Commissioners District 1 and 2 available with us today. I want to just touch real quickly on the format today. We are going to give each of the candidates a two to three minute opportunity to for opening remarks. We will take questions from our moderators. Each candidate will have an opportunity to respond. We will try and take questions from the attendees if time allows. Attendees can enter their questions via the question box. Closing remarks of about two minutes for each candidate. And then remember, additional questions and answers from our candidates will be available at the meridianchamber.org after this event. Uh, we did have everyone fill out a, a pretty good uh, questionnaire. Okay. With that, uh, I'd like to uh, not waste any more time and get started with our program. So I would like to uh, start with our Idaho Legislative Republican primary contested races. And we will begin with the Senate District 14 and go in alphabetical order. Uh, we're gonna allow opening remarks uh, for Senator Grove. Would you mind uh, sharing your camera and unmuting and giving us your opening remarks? Okay, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Very good, thank you, Sean and Ryan. I appreciate the opportunity to have a few minutes with folks here and to uh, chat with you. Uh, my background, I was born in Idaho, raised in Boise. We raised our family in Meridian. And uh, my professional career was here in Fraser Valley, uh, headquartered in Boise, but also we worked uh, all of Idaho and out of state folks as well. So I am a CPA by profession and a small business owner. Uh, in the legislature, I serve as the vice chairman of the uh, local government and taxation committee. I also serve on the uh, joint finance and appropriation committee. And they're the groups that uh, reviews. So we listed 105 different uh, department heads come in and talk to us and tell us about all the money they need and why they want it. And so we have the opportunity to review that and then we work on the budgets and spend a lot of time behind the scenes getting into the detail. And then we uh, go with that budget. And we get recommendations from the governor and then we uh, modify that as we deem appropriate and then present that goes forward to the House and to the uh, Senate. Uh, I have two terms on the uh, 
West State of School Board. And so I feel that I have a good uh, background experience with uh, public education. I have a lot of kids. And in fact, I've got 20 grandchildren right now who are in the uh, uh, public schools here in the Treasure Valley. So education is a pri priority for me. I'm uh, also big on conservative family values, as you can tell. Um, that's kind of a brief introduction. Uh, I've got more than 30 years experience, like I say, in my professional career as a CPA, a small business owner here in the Valley. And so my desire in uh, serving in the legislature is to put that experience to work. I feel that I can make a positive contribution to uh, help manage the affairs of the state of Idaho, particularly at this time when we have this uh, difficult uh, hit to our state revenues. And we're going to have to be looking at uh, how we reduce budgets of all the different state uh, entities. So from that standpoint, uh, I feel I'm well qualified for that. Uh, when we talk about public education, with my background in the school board, I, I feel that uh, I can make a positive contribution there as well. And so that's a quick summary of my background. And I'm pro-gun and pro-life and pro-jobs and uh, just grateful to uh, have the opportunity to be here with you today. And uh, take a few minutes to introduce myself. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Groh. Um, the other person on the ballot for State Senate District 14 in the Republican primary is Mr. Ted Hill. Mr. Hill is unable to join us today. Uh, he is currently serving active duty in the Navy Reserves, uh, and he regrets that he is unable to attend. So we will move on. to legis uh, excuse me, State Senate Legislative District 21. Uh, we'll begin with uh, Senator Baer. Would you mind uh, unmuting and sharing with us your opening comments? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hi, I'm Regina Bayer from District 21. I want to start by thanking the Meridian Chamber for offering this forum as an opportunity for you to learn a little bit about me. I have been serving as your District 21 Senator for two years, following in the footsteps of my son Clifford Bayer, who represented our district in the legislature for 15 years. I am now running for re-election to continue serving my constituents. I am a lifelong Republican. I'd like to tell you a little bit about what has given me the foundation for who I am and how I think. When I married my husband, Dieter, over 56 years ago, the course of the rest of my life was set. Dieter lived under both Nazism and communism. Living under those tyrannies instilled in him a tremendous desire for freedom. He escaped to the West in the early 50s and eventually made it to America where he became an American citizen. And from day one, he swore to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. That is the position we both have taken all of our lives. We both cherish the liberty and freedoms our great country affords us. In my earlier life, I had a 35-year real estate career. I was a broker, had my own office, and in the mid-80s, I was president of the Ada County Board of Realtors. I served that board in numerous leadership capacities. My husband and I were also home builders here in the Treasure Valley from the early 70s until the early 90s. Between my real estate experience and our home building, I worked with many of the fathers of men in the building trade here today. Our desire to preserve freedom for future generations opened the door for me to serve in the Idaho Senate. As you can imagine from my history, of utmost importance to me is freedom. Freedom to the individual versus concentration of power. Along with that, I support the free enterprise system. In other words, laissez-faire. I support both our US and state constitutions, and I use them as a guiding light when considering legislation. If something is unconstitutional, I can't support it. I believe parents have the right to choose how to best direct the upbringing and education of their children. I believe we must reduce tax burdens. People should not be driven out of their homes. And yes, transportation funding is a high priority of mine. There's a lot to be done, 
and I'm glad to give my energy and time to do my part. Thanks. Thank you, Senator Barrow. Appreciate that. Uh, next in the State Senate Legislative District 21 uh, race is uh, Ms. Wendy Webb. Good afternoon. I'm glad to be with you this afternoon. Um, what a great experience. Um, this has been a strange experience that I haven't been able to get out and meet you. I decided to run two days before I filed. I haven't had a chance to meet a lot of you. And so it's been a strange experience the last couple of months. I was born in Burley, um, raised in Nampa um, in a family business that we, we struggled along as some family businesses do. So I under, understand where these small businesses are coming from. Um, I'm a fourth generation Idahoan. My father's family is from Teton Valley and my mother's family is from Declo, Idaho. And my husband's family is from the small town of Marsing. So I have experience in um, from one border to the other of Idahoans. Um, I believe in families. I'm a mother of five children. I have a child in the West Ada School District in public school. I have children in college. I have a son entering the workforce. I have parents that are in the retirement um, stage of life. Um, so I feel like I, I can understand and represent the, the range of ages in our, in our district. I am pro-life, I am pro-gun. Idaho is one of the least legislated states. I don't have an agenda to, ch to change any of those, those laws. Um, I was an, a certified teacher for about 19 years. I've spent hundreds, probably thousands of hours in the schools as both a teacher and as a mother volunteering. I'm very passionate about education. I've been concerned about the overcrowding in our schools and that we, we could just use some better outcomes in some of our education targets. I am just happy to be with you today, and I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Webb. Appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Um, Next up, uh, for House of Representatives, District 14, House Seat B, uh, we have Diane DeMorto. Um, thank you, you Sean. Um, thank you, Chamber of Commerce, for having us today. You know, I um, asked Sean if I might just take a minute to thank the Chamber for um, their leadership and for the resources that they are providing in terms of the keep. Uh, healthy, open for business, and boy, are we ready to open for business. So thank you for the uh, Chamber's leadership and the resources, support, and training that they are offering and encouraging businesses to get open and um, and do it the right way. So um, with that, um, I felt it's such a privilege and honor to be able to serve as uh, your state representative for Eagle, Star, and West Meridian um, for the last few years. Um, it, uh, I serve um, uh, as the vice chair of the business committee. Uh, I serve on transportation and, um, and education. Part of um, transportation is also defense. And I would be remiss if we didn't today honor those that are, um, have just left yesterday, um, our Idaho Air National Guard folks, 400 of them that left yesterday to serve our country in the Middle East and South, Southwest Asia. So thank you to, to those folks that continue uh, to serve and, and to defend our constitution and our freedoms and protect those freedoms in the way of life that, um, that we hold dear. Um, at, with that, I will tell you that um, one of the things that I do value most about my service is being able to protect and defend the Constitution, including our Second Amendment, and of course, um, pro-life, and uh, respecting and doing what we can to protect the sanctity of life. Along with that, reasons that I'm running uh, to lower taxes and, and limit government, uh, to strengthen our economy and grow high paying jobs. And of course, to manage growth and reduce um, traffic in our area. Finally, um, with the honor of serving on the education committee um, and with 
my long service in the community as um, as uh, an advocate for um, improving our education in the state of Idaho. Um, I, I want our children and our grandchildren to have the opportunity to raise their families in our, our great state with Idaho values and an Idaho strong economy. That happens when we invest in education in very um, targeted ways with an eye to our return on investment. It's the same thing that you guys do uh, around your conference rooms, around your board table, and, uh, and every Idahoan does around their kitchen table. And that is looking at our investments with an, ex an expectation to return on our returns. And in part, um, that means investing in retaining our experienced teachers. We have great uh, research and data that shows that students actually improve their achievement under the tutelage of experienced teachers. Um, with Teacher Appreciation Week just ending, um, we can't thank our teachers enough for the incredible job that they're doing in, the, in these unusual circumstances. So let me just touch again on that limited government and lower taxes. We have to control government spending. And I continue to um, look at ways that we can cut government. Um, how do we lower our, our taxes? We do that first by reducing our, our spending. But secondly, we can no longer tax our seniors right out of their homes. Um, you may have heard me say it before. I believe it is one of the most un-American things that we do um, is our property taxes and not allowing um, particularly our seniors to own, truly own the, um, their shelter, the roof of their head. So I believe we have to address that in a comprehensive way. And so um, those are some of the reasons why I am running and will continue to fight for the, our district. Thank you, Representative Mora. Appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, also uh, on the ballot for District 14 House Seat B is uh, Mr. Josh Tanner. He's unable to be with us today. Uh, so we'll move on to House of Representatives District 20 House Seat A. Uh, we have uh, Don Maglish. Uh, we have, there we go, excellent. Oh. Go ahead, your opening remarks. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so this is all new for me. Um, I'm excited to run for the legislator. I've been um, actively involved in different areas, of, um, mostly advocacy, but for me that has been really eye-opening to see the different levels of government at work and different places that they're producing this. One reason I'm running for state rep in the well, I'm I'm engaged. I'm sorry, yes. I didn't know what the noise was. Um, actively engaged in my community, getting involved, actually going to schools, talking to teachers, state, um, the principals, the teachers, the students, um, getting them involved. Um, I really want to participate in school board, city, and county meetings to find out how we can better represent them at the state level to off, you know, help with the tax issues. My specialty um, is mostly in i've worked with criminal justice issues working with um, victims of human trafficking um, and we do have a lack of services for juveniles in our state i hope to get to that um, at the legislature to open eyes to that and to see how we can better support that um, i am pro-life pro-gun um, i'm pro-republican and conservative values um, I feel like the government is a necessary evil um, that we have to regulate. So how do we best do that to equip our constituents to live healthy lives? Um, I also um, just am a small business owner. I run a nonprofit here in Meridian. Um, I live in Meridian. My kids graduated school from Meridian Technical High School. Um, and I'm just really excited for the opportunity to serve my area. Excellent. Thank you so much uh, for joining us here today. Uh, next, we have uh, in District 20, House Seat A, uh, Representative Palmer. Let's make sure you're on here and unmute it.
Mr. Palmer, you can unmute. I think I'm unmuted. There you go. Sounds good. Go ahead. Thank you. My name is Joe Palmer. I've served in the legislature now for six terms, fourth generation Idahoan. My wife and I have been married for 33 years. We've raised our four children here, our seven grandchildren here. I graduated from Meridian High School. Um, Meridian and Idaho are important to me. The reason I originally ran was because of that as a business owner in Meridian, dealing with the overburdensome regulation of government. I don't consider myself a politician at all. I just was a businessman that felt like I was getting kicked around by the state and the county and the highway district and decided to run for the legislature. And I've been serving there ever since. Um, most of my time is spelt, spent dealing with transportation issues. I chair the transportation committee. I'm also on state affairs and business. Um, so most, most all of the energy that I do during the legislative session is dealing with transportation and the funding of that. Uh, transportation is severely underfunded. It's a long drawn out process to be able to keep up with paying for roads. And so that's a, a big obligation that I have taken on and been assigned to do as the chairman of the transportation committee. Excellent. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Thank you for uh, joining us today. We'll uh, get back to you with some questions momentarily. Uh, next up, we have uh, District 21, House Seat B. Uh, our first candidate is uh, Greg Furch. Mr. Furch, are you on? Um, go ahead, Mr. Furch. No, cannot hear you. Uh, let's see here. Want to unmute? Looks like you're muted. Still can't hear you, Mr. Furch. Sorry about that. Um, inevitably, we're gonna run into some technical difficulties. Uh, I will uh, come back to Mr. Furch and let's see if we can move on and we'll see if Mr. Furch can get his, uh, still can't hear you, sir. I'm gonna move on to the next candidate and I'll come back to Mr. Furch here momentarily and see if he can, uh, we can see you. Uh, your your microphone shows unmuted, but we're not able to hear you. Uh, next candidate, District 21, House Seat B, is uh, Eli Hudson. Uh, Mr. Hudson, are you online with us? Yes, I am. All right, Eli, if you would mind uh, giving some opening comments here, and we'll um, we'll see if we can get Mr. Furch taken care of. Go ahead. Absolutely. Um, pleased to be with you. Thank you for having me, Sean. Thank you to the Meridian uh, Chamber of Commerce. And um, just to introduce myself, my name is Eli Hodson. I'm running in District 21, House Seat B. And I'm a fourth generation Idahoan. I grew up on the Boise bench, uh, went to Bora High School. I graduated from there in 2004 and uh, then went on to attend the College of Idaho. Uh, shortly thereafter, um, after graduating, I joined the uh, Risch campaign and worked for Senator Risch, helped him get elected to the U.S. Senate, and then um, worked for him for a number of years, um, bo both in Boise and in Washington, D.C. Um, I've been a lifelong Republican. Uh, when I was 15 years old, I walked two miles down Capitol Boulevard and uh, went into Senator Craig's office at that time and let them know I was ready to get to work for the Republican Party and for Idaho. And they brought me in as an intern at that time. And I've been active as a Republican ever since. Um, I'm a very uh, strong pro-business Republican. Um, you know, I, I consider Senator Risch to have been a, a really strong mentor for me. I'm a common sense kind of guy, a strong constitutionalist, uh, very conservative guy, pro-Second Amendment, very strong pro-life. 
and um, of course support the U.S. Constitution, the state constitution. And um, I'm running in this district because I think that um, in many ways we've kind of had our our voice lost in the district. I've spoken to so many of the voters out here, and I know that there's a hunger to re-engage and the folks out here want their voice to be heard at the state legislature. We're going through tremendous changes. And so I know that that's uh, crucial that we re-engage with the voters and make sure that they're being heard at the state house. And I also think that District 21, as we've watched the Democrats encroaching on uh, you know, separate districts throughout Ada County, um, I think we have a really great opportunity to hold this district and make sure that that does not continue, but it is going to take someone with great leadership skills, uh, great experience, um, such that I, I feel like I have at this point, and also the ability to perk our ears up, listen, and make sure that the voters are being heard and they know that they're able to engage again. And so that's really the core of my campaign and uh, really great a great opportunity to be here. I appreciate you guys having me. And uh, once again, my name's Eli Hodson. Thank you, Mr. Hodson, appreciate that. Uh, looks like maybe Mr. Furks is connected by phone. So let's see if we can go back to uh, Greg. Greg, are you there? Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Go ahead. All right, uh, very good. Well, sorry about the um, challenges with my mic. Uh, you can watch me here holding the phone, I guess. Um, I just wanted to thank the chamber for the opportunity uh, to share a little bit about myself. Um, I'd like to just start by saying I've been a lifelong Republican also. I was a 18 year old delegate to my first uh, convention, state convention back in North Dakota, and I've been involved ever since. Um, you know, and especially in the last 10 years, I believe I've earned a fair amount of street cred uh, with the Republican Party by being highly involved. I've been a delegate to virtually all our state conventions over the last few years. I've held numerous um, volunteer positions with the district and state parties, including having been Ada County chairman for a couple of years. So my allegiance and participation and seriously active involvement with the Republican Party um, is uh, uh, very well established. Um, generally speaking, I would like to say that uh, I am also uh, extremely pro-life. In fact, we were um, privileged enough to receive the endorsement of Idaho Chooses Life in this campaign. Um, we're uh, conservative in the mold of uh, former Representative Labrador and current uh, Congressman Fulcher, who has also endorsed us in this endeavor. So from a political point of view, I would look at those two as a bit of a, a mentor, uh, mentors. Um, we're also very pro Second Amendment or in general, just very constitutionally oriented. Our belief is that the Constitution is a contract and not some sort of uh, living document. And I really look forward to sharing uh, my background. I've been a 26 year chiropractor here, employer. Uh, we've done property development and had to deal with the bureaucracy and I understand the burden it can be to business owners. And so our goal in this mission is to uh, limit the governmental uh, burden on businesses and improve the taxing policies that make Idaho as a whole a wonderful place to live and do business. So. Thank you, Mr. Furch. Appreciate you uh, taking the time to be with us today. Uh, third candidate in the, on the ballot for House District 21, House Seat B, is uh, Brenda Palmer uh, from Meridian. Brenda is not able to be with us today. Uh, so uh, we appreciate her choosing to uh, run for public office. Uh, would like to move on then to House District 22, House Seat A, uh, and uh, give Mr. Bruce, Chris Bruce uh, from CUNA an opportunity to uh, speak. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hey guys, how are you? I'm Chris Bruce. Uh, I'm a resident of CUNA, Idaho. 
I'm running for state legislator for District 22. I married my I found my high school sweetheart 22 years ago. Uh, we currently have two children, one nine and one 12. I'm a mortgage loan originator uh, in the city of Meridian, which I started that in 2001. I'm a cancer survivor. I'm recovering from leukemia ALL, which this is my sixth year in remission. I work on the CUNA Chamber of Commerce as a board of directors. I help with the superintendent's advisory council. I coach Little League football and Little League baseball. Um, and so I'm out in the community. I understand what they're dealing with. I understand what my family's dealing with. And uh, so I've, I've been asked just to kind of put my name out there and, and see if I could help bring their voice to the Capitol. Uh, I have conservative values. I think that it's, you know, it's not, it's not what we get, it's how we spend it, right? So uh, we need to be mindful of the money that we spend. Also with being a mortgage loan originator, I see how the property tax burdens are really hitting our community. I mean, how can we tell people to live the American dream and buy a house, but we rent it from the government for the rest of our lives? Uh, this is something that we definitely need to address, um, you know, as soon as possible. And so I just wanted to say thank you for the opportunity to come on and share, you know, my values and my thoughts with you. I am pro uh, Second Amendment uh, and pro life. I believe if we allow any red flag laws to come in, if, the, if they take our guns away, then we only have criminals and a government to have guns. And if that doesn't scare you, I don't know what else should. Uh, so thank you for the time. Thank you, Mr. Bruce. Appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Uh, next up, we have uh, Representative John Vanderwaal, uh, House District CDA from Nampa. Thank you, Sean. Uh, I've currently served uh, six terms in the House. I currently serve on the Health and Welfare Committee for the last eight years, which is almost like a prison sentence sometimes. But uh, I've worked with those issues and dealing with uh, what we're facing in the state with the coronavirus. And I think we're gonna deal a lot more with a lot of those issues as we move forward. I serve also on the Resources Committee and I'm chairman of the Environment, Energy and Technology Committee. Uh, one of the reasons that I got involved in serving in the legislature was to try to rein in the power of government. And even during this time, I find it scary that the government can decide which businesses are open and which businesses are closed, which ones are essential, and then try to tell you exactly what you can and can't do. Um, to me, this is kind of an overreach of government that needs to be reined back in again. Uh, I believe that as we come back into legislative session, it's going to be a tough one. Uh, it's going to take everybody to work together to try to balance the budget back again. Um, I saw in the paper this morning that uh, the governor's chief of staff says it could be like a 14% cut in budget in the resources that we have to make because we don't have the revenue. And so it's gonna be a difficult time. I believe that my experience and my leadership in the house has served our district well. Uh, I live in the district. I've lived here almost 40 years. Uh, my kids all live in the district. Uh, I've been a small business owner all my life, self-employed. I, I understand the overreach and the over uh, regulation of government. Uh, I also this past year did introduce a bill, but only was allowed to introduce a bill that would deal with the property tax uh, implications of those people once they turn 65 and then the government taxes you out of your home. I think that's a real travesty that the government has to correct. There is no way that after you pay for your home that the government can make you continue to make payments in order for you to be able to stay there. And thanks again for the, uh, the chamber for making this available. I do think your questionnaire was way too long. 16 questions is way too many. You know, I'll stand by my record if you have any questions on how I vote and what I stand for. I think everybody realized I'm pro-life, pro-guns, and like everybody else in, in, uh, in the Republican Party. We all state it, but we don't always all vote the same. So thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you for participating today. Um, we appreciate you taking the time. Um, next up, we have um, House of Representatives, District 22, House Seat B. Um, Representative uh, Monks, please. Thank you. Appreciate you having us here. 
Um, I won't uh, repeat the thanks to the, the chamber, but, but obviously um, appreciate what you guys have done. I would re be very remiss, I, I don't think, if I would mention um, just our condolences for uh, Representative Thera Stevenson, who I've served with for a number of years. Um, she's a wonderful lady who, who um, uh, just passed away recently. Um, in fact, uh, you know, from a, from a friend standpoint, she's a pretty cool, cool lady. Uh, she used to fly for for uh, Air America, and if him, anybody knows what that is, it was a front for the CIA. And to me, that made her uh, a, a pretty cool gal. And, and I um, just wanted to express my condolences to her family and and um, my uh, heartfelt thanks that I was her friend. Um, with that, my name again is Jason Monks. I um, have been in the House for eight years now, the House of Representatives. You know, eight years sounds like an awful lot in time, but when we're only in session for three months at a time. I, I really haven't been there much more than a year and a half um, getting, trying to figure out what's going on there. And it does take time to figure out what we're doing there and how to affect change and how to be successful and how to be an effective um, legislator. And I'm, I'm very proud of the record that I have. A little bit about myself. I do have eight children. I have uh, four biological children and I have four adopted children, which has given me quite a unique experience um, and understanding, especially when it comes to education. My four oldest kids who are all married now, um, all college, uh, almost college grads with my last one, still got another uh, year before he can finish up. Um, but these are, you know, really successful kids, women all had scholarships, gone on um, and uh, done very well. And my adopted children come from a completely different background, um, all special needs and require a different set of rules and, and guidance when it comes to the education. So I think that has helped me understand the different perspectives that we have in our education system and uh, having a mother who's an educator it was uh, uh growing up grading papers in front of jeopardy I, I have a good perspective on that um i'm a small business owner currently um prior to that i used to work in construction i used to work in the high-tech corporate world and so i've kind of seen a little bit of everything and i'm uh proud of the fact that i i still have a successful business in spite of the government's attempts to to shut us down um, and uh, still able to, to put food on the table, keep employees' um, paychecks coming in for them as well. I do currently sit on state affairs. I'm the vice chair of um, judiciary and rules. I'm also on uh, transportation and defense, and I sit on ways and means. Um, I also sit on a federalism committee that, that we run, and I am currently the assistant majority leader. Uh, every year that I've been in the legislature, I've been elected by my colleagues to a position of leadership. And that's something I'm very proud of. I'm proud of my voting record. I'd love to talk more about property taxes and all these other things, but I know my time is limited. Um, I will throw out the, the standard. Um, I was endorsed by Idaho Chooses Life. So obviously I've, I've got a great um, record track record there when it comes to pro-life. I also have a NRA uh, A plus rating um, not too many of us have an A-plus rating, and I'm really proud of that. So um, I, I put forth quite a few bills this last year, some of which made it all the way through the process. Um, but I'm really proud of the, uh, the chances that I took to reduce our property taxes, to increase our transportation funding. Um, and with that, I will be quiet because I know you've got a lot of people that still talk to and ask questions to. Thank you again, uh, Sean, for putting this together. Thank you, Representative Monks. We appreciate you taking the time today. Um, in that District 22 House seat B race, we also have Heidi Sorensen. Uh, Ms. Sorensen was unable to be with us today. So with that, I would like to turn it over to our moderator, Ryan Sup from the Meridian Press. Ryan, if you wouldn't mind posing the first question for our legis Idaho legislative candidates. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Um, as Sean said, I'm Ryan Supi. I cover Meridian for the Meridian Press. Um, on behalf of our organization, just like to say thanks for the candidates. Thanks to the candidates um, for participating. Um, we always relish the opportunity to shoot questions at you. Um, so let's get to it. Uh, first question. Uh, in a questionnaire supplied by the Meridian Chamber of Commerce, uh, lengthy as was mentioned, um, you were asked to identify the top three challenges facing the Meridian community. Um, I've selected three common answers from that questionnaire. Uh, first challenge, increased property taxes and housing costs. Second, managing growth, especially mitigating its effects on traffic and congestion. Uh, and third, economic development. Uh, candidates, please choose one of these challenges facing Meridian and tell us how you would approach solving the issue at the State House. Um, I think we'll start with uh, Mr. Groh, uh, State Senate seat from District 14. Uh, 
Uh, Mr. Grill, looks like you're still muted. Can you hear me out? Oh, you're good. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, I appreciate all three of those are my top uh, items, transportation, education, and property taxes. Let me let me address the property tax issue. Here in Ada County, we have uh, unbearable increases in property taxes that we just, uh, our people can't live with. I'm hearing from all kinds of folks. That was a major issue I heard from, from uh, constituents during this last session. They say they are getting taxed out of their homes, particularly the elderly. It's a weird thing that uh, here you have your home paid for, and yet uh, you end up dealing with uh, a monthly payment with property taxes, or if you're retired, you get a lump sum hit at the end of the year. My dad and mom are 93. They've been in the same house in Boise. It's a 70 year old house. They've been there more than 60 years. And dad's taxes went up more than uh, 34% just last year alone. So he's retired obviously many years ago. That, that's a major hit for older people. We, we can't continue to let that happen. I helped uh, sponsor and push legislation on property taxes last time we got it through the house. And when it came over to the Senate, we uh, continued to work with it and push it. And uh, we were sh a couple of votes shy to get that passed in the Senate. Uh, that's my priority. When we get back there again, I want to hit property taxes. I want to make sure that uh, right off the bat, we uh, produce another bill that will property taxes. Um, one of the things that, uh, as I look at that is, oh, I'm on an interim committee. I've just recently uh, appointed to serve on an interim property tax working group and we will be exploring all possibilities how we can reduce property taxes one of the things we have here in our in district 14 which is the west Ada school district our school taxes are more than 50 percent of our uh, property taxes and having two terms on the school board and having been chairman and pushed for get high schools passed and bond issues passed which we did i ended of those bond issues, but we need to do something. Our state is most offensive equivalent uh, across all districts. But, uh, we're really hit heavily here in, uh, in our West Ada School District. So one of the things I think we need to do is look at the state level to do some kind of funding in these high growth areas to help with construction of, uh, of buildings. So that will be another emphasis that I have in this next session. So to get rid of property taxes, to not get rid of them but to reduce them and make them tenable, manageable for people, because we all need to support our local uh, cities, counties, et cetera. I understand that. And we'll do our best to make that happen, but also reduce the burden on our individuals. Thank you so much. Right. Senator Baer, would you mind uh, answering that question? Senator Barrow, are you with us? All right, looks like we may have lost Senator Bear. Um, Mrs. Webb. Hello. Yes. Hello, Sean, this is Regina Bayer. Oh, yes, Mrs. Bear, go ahead. Okay, I know this muting problem is something else. Um, tax reform, we need all kinds. We need property tax relief, grocery sales tax relief, and senior citizen relief to allow our citizens to remain in their homes. You know, my son spearheaded the grocery sales tax relief several years ago, got it passed the legislature only to be vetoed by the government. Um, tax solutions need to be fair, equitable, and predictable solutions. There was a movement last session to address both the homeowner's exemption and the circuit breaker, but neither issue produced changes yet. We must tackle these taxes again next session. Folks on fixed income really do need relief. We need to change the parameters of the circuit breaker, and that affects a lot of the property tax. One of the things in the circuit breaker, they calculate Social Security as an income 
qualifier as to whether you qualify for circuit breaker or not. And it's one of the only entities that consider Social Security. Um, federal income tax does not, state income tax does not, even Medicaid does not. So I think we need to look at those parameters and see what we can do to um, benefit the senior citizens to help them remain in their homes. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Barrow. Uh, Mrs. Webb, you're up. Ten years. So growth has affected us more than anything in the last ten years, and that's one of the reasons I um, decided to run. I feel like, well, growth has affected our property taxes, growth has affected our schools, growth has affected our roads, and they all interact with one another. I've been especially concerned about schools in our area. I'm over here in South Meridian, and we have over a thousand new homes that have been approved to be built this year within one elementary school district that's already in one elementary school boundary that is already over capacity. And now the bond that was supposed to go forward this year was canceled. I, I think that we need to give our counties um, some tools um, to be able to deal with the growth. I'm not sure what that looks like. It could be a bond, you know, changing, um, changing the way we pay for our schools. Maybe we need to do impact fees. But I think the bond is just not keeping up with our schools, um, with the building of schools, and then we're paying interest on those bonds. And the bonds are um, such a burden on our property taxpayer. And I just think we need to, to discover some new ways to pay for our schools and, and take that burden off the property taxpayer. I think that in all the growth measures, we need to give the county and the cities more tools to be able to deal with the growth that we have experienced in our area. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Webb. Um, Representative Mordaunt. Oh, let's see if I can get, uh, see if that works. Um, thanks, John, and, and thanks, Ryan, for the question. Um, you know, I, twofold. Uh, two parts to this answer. Um, lowering taxes and limiting government. What do I mean by that? We create jobs when we get government out of the way. And we know we had one of the strongest economies in the nation before coronavirus. And I believe in Idaho businesses' ability to rebuild and Idahoans' um, ability to rebuild our economy. We had the lowest unemployment um, and, and of course, a uh, mm -hmm. tremendous number of businesses coming into Idaho. And um, we need to reduce regulation. One of the important committees that I have co-chaired is um, a regulatory reform um, occupational licensing committee that have, has been a, a focused um, just laser focused on reducing those regulations that stand in the way of businesses and jobs. And when we move government out of the way, we will be able to rebuild even quicker. And um, I, I believe in our ability to get to right where we were before leading the nation in terms of economic growth. Uh, secondly, lowering taxes. There's no question that um, we are overtaxed, and that includes both our, our families and our businesses. Um, our families, in terms of these property taxes, as people have mentioned, you know, I am an advocate for um, raising that homeowner's exemption, uh, looking at the, the circuit breaker and, and the requirements for that. And, and again, that is going to involve also um, reducing the spending of government and taxing entities. So I think it's twofold limiting the government and um, lowering taxes that is going to help in our economic growth. You know, the third part of that, of course, is our investment in transportation. Um, I have been an advocate 
at the state house for spending general fund dollars on our roads. That makes our um, spending on roads, our increased funding of roads uh, more predictable and therefore our money goes further. When we know what that investment is going to be on an annual basis in terms of um, funding for transportation, we can then better plan and better use those transportation dollars to make sure that we reduce traffic and that our folks are safe on the roads. So um, I believe that we can get back to being a leader in the nation in terms of our economy. Tough decisions are gonna to have to be made at the state, state house. And I think that's why it's even more important today than ever to elect those that have a proven track record of conservative approaches to legislation and protecting our constitution. Hey, Sean, I think you're muted. Yeah. <laughs> talking and, and I'm muted. So Ms. Manglish, thank you. <laughs> That's okay. Um, it, these are all really interesting um, topics. Um, I'd like to touch on the taxes a little. Um, every legislator um, in our party um, definitely always says we want to reduce taxes, but it's not happening because we don't have the tools to do that. Um, as legislators, we need to um, get those tools working um, and we need to work with both sides of the aisle to get that done. Um, I have had extensive conversations um, with talking with city and county about how property taxes are being used. Um, they're being stretched thin when it comes to how many different areas they're used in. Um, I looked at the, um, the budget for that and how it's being used. I think we really need to start pinpointing and working together to get um, the property property taxes lower with the, the growth increase. Obviously the value of homes are gonna go up as we've seen, which is a good thing, but it just takes more money to pay the taxes on that. So how are we gonna actually implement tools? I've not heard solutions from tax, from legislators that are saying we're gonna lower taxes. Um, I don't think the legislation that was brought um, up this past year was helpful at a state level. Um, we can't treat Ada County the same as we do um, smaller counties like Butte and, and, and the rural counties. You have to have some way to equip the counties and the cities to take care of their property taxes and their constituents at the place they're at. It's not a one size fits all. So I would say taxes, obviously um, transportation is an issue. However, um, that's also limited, but I'm gonna stick with the taxes for now. Thank you, Mrs. Magalish. Um, Representative Palmer. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. So, you covered a lot of big topics there. If you want property taxes to go down, we have to spend less money. I agree with that. The locals have to spend less money, the state has to spend less money. Um, talk about transportation funding a little bit. Uh, Representative DeMordant talked to, about general funds. Uh, I'll expound on that just a little bit. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that we spend very little of our general fund on roads. Most, a good portion of the general funds comes from the roads. Just the sale of used cars alone, just used cars, raises $250 million a year into sales tax. That doesn't include parts, tires, new cars, that's just used. Our sales tax is growing at over $100 million a year in a normal year. Granted, we've got a whole different ball game that we're going to have to deal with this year because of the coronavirus, which you're going to have to have experienced people in there that understand what's going on with the budget and how to make those cuts in it. But for right now, if we take that out of the picture, I'd like to use some of the growth of the sales tax to pay for the roads. The roads need to be paid for. You can't just push it off. Gas tax will not keep up with it. You can't just keep raising the gas tax. Different types of cars coming online, electric cars, they're not using any, they're not paying their fair share at all. A few years ago, we only had a few, it didn't matter, but now every day there's more electric cars added on. So that has to be done through a different type of a tax. So those are all issues that we have to take on constantly. Um, but the biggest thing we need to do is spend less money. 
Thank you, Representative Palmer. Appreciate your insight. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Furch, would you mind uh, sharing your thoughts on uh, the question? Um, yes. Well, I think I'm going to stay with the taxes theme and suggest that we need to lower and be more transparent on how their how taxes are spent. So as a couple of examples, I'm privileged enough to help provide a couple of family families housing. And in a modest about 1300 square foot house in Boise, the first $253 of their rent simply goes to the property taxes alone. And that is a huge percentage of the market rate for for a home like that. And I think we need to be mindful of, of that. And when it comes to lowering taxes, we also have to consider um, the potential to shift the burden to non-owner occupied properties to include rental homes in our uh, drive for solutions to lower property taxes. Um, we need to be in, in, in a position to moderate the impact on the rentals also when it comes to those solutions. And then as far as transparency, as an example, a few years ago, um, Boise passed a fire safety bond. Now the issues that that bond uh, was intended to solve may have been legitimate and valid issues, but it was sold as a tax increase because we were short of funds. And then it was about a year later, there's an article in the Statesman about the groundbreaking for the Bone Crossing Library. And the press release said that the funding for the library was made possible by the passage of last year's fire safety bond. So of course the question is, we were sold a, a tax increase to provide fire and safety relief, but then somehow we ended up with a pot of magic money down the road for a new bone crossing library. And so I think we need to not only lower and mitigate the tax obligation, but we also have to be extremely transparent with the taxpayers on how that money is and will be used. Thank you, Mr. Perch. Appreciate your, your input. Uh, Mr. Hudson. Ahead, hey, Sean. Okay. Yeah. Great questions. I uh, love discussing these topics. These are things that I've heard so much from the uh, voters in this district about. These are certainly pressing issues out here. I live on South Cloverdale and I know that traffic has just been increasing every year. And um, that's, that's pretty much the common theme throughout the entire area. And so certainly as, as far as transportation goes, there's more that we can do um, as state legislators to ensure that we're uh, putting those funds in, in the places that are going to count and making sure that we're addressing those traffic issues, um, you know, road widening, um, helping to um, relieve traffic in our, our major corridors. Those are things that we really need to look at. As far as, uh, as education goes, um, my wife's a teacher here in West Ada. Um, so I, I've seen a lot of the things that have been going on. I know that we're cutting a huge amount out of the budget. I think it was 99 uh, million that was just announced. And so um, there are major, major changes coming. This, this virus has caused a lot of problems. Um, but the good news is we can, we can take this on and we can, we can find the solutions to deal with this. The voters in our district, they're smart people. They understand when we're confronted with challenges like this, we can find the solutions and some of the best solutions that we're going to come up with are going to come directly from those voters. Um, we got through the 2008 crisis and uh, I think we can get through this just fine, but it is going to take communication with the voters and making sure that everyone's on the same page and uh, making sure that the voters are very familiar with the way the process works at the state house so that they can um, help provide the input that's actually going to be effective there. Um, as far as taxes, of course, as a property owner here in the district, you know, taxes are always a major burden, even for a young guy like myself who, who's working and I can still afford to pay those taxes. I have talked to people in the district who are watching neighbors and, uh, you know, parents 
being squeezed and pushed out of the district. Now they're moving all the way out to Nampa um, and Caldwell, where they're having to pay more now to drive in to go to work. And so, of course, that's a major issue and something that we can address um, at the state legislature. And again, something that I think we need to get more input from the voters on, but there's definitely a solution out there and um, we're gonna make it happen. It's just a matter of, of talking to the voters and uh, bringing those solutions to the state house. Thank you, Mr. Hodson. Uh, we are at the top of the hour. So I do wanna just remind everyone that this is being recorded. If uh, we're running long on the legis Idaho legislative candidates, so we will be getting to the county commissioners here uh, shortly, but uh, just remember this is being recorded. And if you do have to jump off, you can go back and watch this at your leisure. Uh, so next I'd like to uh, pass this over to Mr. Bruce, District 22 House Seat A candidate uh, for your answer to the question. Hey, thank you. Uh, so I will talk about property taxes as well. I know that we talk about elderly being taxed out of their properties, but one of the things that I see on a regular basis is housing affordability. When you have your taxes that are upwards of a quarter percent of your mortgage payment, you have people that have been born and raised here. They've done everything right. They've gone to school, they've got good jobs, they have good credit, but they can't afford a house. Uh, that's something that's just heartbreaking for me to see just uh, on a daily basis. Also, when we talk about uh, growth, growth needs to be sustainable. Uh, even when we talk about funding education, I hear a lot of the time where people say, well, that can't be done. And my thought to that is that if that's your answer, if your answer is that can't be done, you've already lost the battle. Uh, we have to think of different ways to fund education. Actually, in 2006, there was a bill that was introduced. I don't think it made it anywhere, but looked at adding impact fees for schools. Um, so I think we need to be open minded when we talk about all funding models um, and property tax. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bruce. Uh, next up, uh, Representative Unruh. Uh Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, you had three questions there and you only asked us to pick one. And so I will go with the economic one. Um, as we look at that in our district in CUNA, it, it's become more of a bedroom community. It really needs some businesses and some economic input going there. But when we look at some of what the government has done, we have provided tax incentives to go to urban renewal districts and stuff like that. And we say, well, we need to lower the taxes to attract businesses. Well, if we have to lower taxes to attract businesses, why can't we lower taxes to all businesses? What about the people that are still here? And so I think as a legislature, that's something we have to look at as far as what tools we are using to try to attract businesses. And if lower taxes are one of them that we use, then maybe we should lower it for everybody. Uh, roads, um, transportation, I believe we should use general fund money for that. Thank you, Representative Underwood. Uh, next up is Representative uh, Monks. Would you mind sharing with us your thoughts? Thank you. I guess I'll stick with the trans uh, the uh, property tax um, theme just because I did a lot of work on that this last session. Um, a couple of things. I mean, one of the first bills that I put forward this last year was actually to remove and repeal all property taxes. I think property tax is a leftover vestige from the um, era of kings and queens that if you were a, a lord of a manor, you had to pay your tribute to the king or the queen or you lost your property. And that hasn't changed today. Go ahead and stop paying your property taxes and see if you still own that property. So I think we've got to get rid of the property tax to begin with. And, and I am proud of the, the bills that I introduced. Uh, I had one that completely eliminated that property tax. I had two other bills that I introduced to, uh, to help with property tax. One was a uh, budgetary freeze. Now, it's really important that we understand when we talk about property taxes, first of all, this has nothing to do with the state. The state doesn't collect those property taxes, nor does any of the money collected from property tax go to the state. That is all local taxing districts. So it's, first of all, it's very important to understand that. The second thing it's, uh, that we have to understand about property taxes is it is all based on the budget. So earlier you heard today that we said that Idaho was going to expecting to get about 14% less revenue. That means we have to reduce our budget by 14%. The cities and counties do not have to do that. 
they set their budget and then they raise the property taxes however much they need in order to get that budget. They just adjust the levy rates. So it doesn't matter if your property value goes up or your property value goes down, the levy rate is what's going to affect whether or not you pay property taxes. So that's very important to, to understand. And one of the bills that we introduced would actually have frozen for a year the portion of the property taxes um, that is collected, just that budgetary number. And so that was a, an important step that that uh, I was a, a sponsor of, and I'm, I'm proud of that. And I think uh, it, we, we got it halfway there. We didn't get it quite all the way there. Um, knowing that that wasn't going to finish or get through last year, I also introduced um, House Bill 4 or 648. Um, we have about $85 million in a property tax or a, a tax relief fund. Um, my bill actually would have returned all of that money to every homeowner. Um, that's what the fund's for, and that was a way of getting some direct property tax relief to the individuals. The last thing I'd like to point out, too, is when we talk about homeowners exemptions and circuit breakers, when you increase those, you're just shifting the taxes to somebody else. That That's not to me a good solution. This is budgetary driven and you have to have a solution that is budgetary deliver, um, driven as well. Um, I, I'm not a real big fan of, of, um, of uh, you know, local, prop, lo local option taxes to help offset the um, property tax burden because all that is is shifting it somewhere else again. Um, so I think if we're looking at these, these solutions to property tax, we have to look at the budgets because that's where uh, what is driving the property tax increase and nothing else. And that's where the solution has to be. And um, with that, I'll, I'll uh, be quiet and let somebody else talk for a bit. Thank you, Representative Monks. We appreciate you taking the time today. Um, with that, I would like to uh, try and shift this over to our Ada County Commissioners. and. Um, the Republican primary contested races um, and give them a chance to have some opening remarks. And then uh, Ryan with the Meridian Press will uh, give them uh, a question. With that, I'd like to start with uh, Mr. Davidson of Ada County Commissioner District 1. Mr. Davidson, are you with us? I don't think Mr. Davidson was able to Today. I did not see him on there. So let's go on to uh, Mr. Hallward. Are you with us? Are you muted, Rod? No. Davidson? Mr. Hallward. There you go. You're unmuted now, Mr. Hallward. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. I don't, I don't see my camera up there. I'm sorry. Um, that's fine. Um, my apologies. I'm a little bit uh, distraught this morning. So my apologies. I've, only, I've been on three hours sleep and just found out an hour before uh, this forum that uh, a family member passed away. So uh, I'm very distraught. So uh, forgive me if I seem out of sorts. Um, and you want to know a little bit, bit about myself? And is that what the question was? Yeah, just opening remarks, sir. Well, uh, to start off, I'm a, a small business owner uh, in uh, Ada County. I own two businesses here. So understandably, uh, you can tell that I'm really feeling the, the pinch of the COVID-19. Uh, it's been uh, very troubling like it has for, for most uh, small businesses. I'm a former uh, firefighter. I'm also a writer. A uh, published author as well, um, and I wanted to run because I felt that uh, there needed to be some changes. Uh, we see the uh, county commission uh, controlled by two socialist Democrats, and I'm a, a lifelong Reagan Republican, pro-life, uh, pro-Second Amendment, uh, pro-Constitution. I keep a constitution with me wherever I go, um, Declaration of Independence. I believe in uh, pure freedoms and uh, minimal taxes and low and minimal government. If possible, no taxes and no government. I believe uh, people uh, could, uh, can manage themselves for the most part. And I believe uh, small businesses can manage themselves better than the government. So uh, as you can tell, I'm very uh, in tune to low taxes uh, and low government. And uh, Ronald Reagan was a uh, big inspiration to me when I was uh, seven years old. I grew up under the Jimmy Carter administration 
I remember waiting in, in uh, gas lines in my dad's uh, green Montego back in the 70s in the gas, gas shortage and uh, in the sweltering heat of 100 degrees. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember uh, the Iran uh, hostage situation when I was just a kid. And, uh, you know, supporting Reagan is, a, is just a small child and later working on campaigns for Bob Dole, um, George W. Bush, and most recently, uh, Donald J. Trump, uh, I felt now was the time for me to uh, throw my uh, baseball cap uh, in the ring and uh, make uh, the county uh, a better, stronger, conservative, uh, open uh, county. And uh, that is all for me. Thank you, Mr. Howard. Appreciate you taking the time today. Um, Ada County Commissioner, District 2, Mary McFarland, would you mind sharing with us your opening comments? Hello, thank you so much for hosting this. It's good to uh, have a forum where we can actually talk to the voters and let them know where we stand on critical issues. Uh, I'm an Idaho native. I've lived in Ada County over 30 years. I uh, attended the University of Idaho. I've been a lifelong Republican casting my first vote for Ronald Reagan back in 1984. Um, I think one of the things that sets me apart from some of the commissioners and some of the uh, other people running is that I have taken a very strong stand against accepting any kind of funds or endorsements from anyone that could benefit from my favor. So, for instance, um, I wouldn't accept an endorsement from, say, the sheriff because his his budget is under the county. Uh, I'm, I'm refusing any kind of endorsements from anybody that's a department head. Uh, pretty much self-funded with the help of a couple of friends. So when I when I do win, uh, my plan is to get in there and get to work uh, really honing the budget. The budget's our biggest problem in Ada County. It's grown from 200 under 200 million seven years ago to over 300 million dollars. Mm -hmm. And the function of how they write their budget is the soul of the problem. And that's the first thing that I would work at is is rewriting that budget and how the process is actually done. Thank you, Ms. McFarland. Uh, next up, we have Terry Murison. Ms. Murison. Thank you, Sean. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much uh, to the chamber and Sean and Ryan, uh, fellow candidates and those who are taking the time to get to know each of us better. Davidson, thank you for joining us today. I'm really sorry to hear about your loss. I am Terry Murison, a conservative Republican who is running for Ada County Commissioner in District 2. I've been married to my husband, Rich, for 38 years. He's an instructor at the Department of Corrections. Our daughter, Megan, uh, calls Ada County home, along with her deputy sheriff husband, Jordan, who's also a member of the Idaho National Army Guard. We have two grandchildren that love Idaho and that we absolutely adore. I was hired by the state and moved here in 2011 to run the Idaho Soil and Water Conservation Commission. We work with farmers and ranchers who want to take good care of Idaho's soil, water, <coughs> air, plants, and animals. As a former foster child and adoptee, I am pro-life. I am pro-Second Amendment. I've operated a small business and I've experienced firsthand the impacts of regulations and high taxes. I respect and rule the honor of law in favor of small government. I'm running to cut and cap taxes and county spending and to provide relief to overburdened taxpayers. I wanna harness the economic engine of growth for businesses and individuals while maintaining the quality of life that we love. I'm running for our children, grandchildren, and yours. My land use and transportation planning experience will help us grow wisely and keep Ada County the wonderful place it is. I want our streets to stay among the safest of the nation. And finally, I want you to be as involved in your county government as you choose to be. On my watch, the county will be transparent and accountable to you. I'll foster collaboration with Meridian and the rest of the cities, ACHD and the state. As we cut and cap taxes and county services, I'm here to make sure we grow responsibly and preserve this place we love for future generations. Thank you, Ms. Morrison. Appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Um, another candidate for Ada County 
Commissioner of District 2 that was unable to be with us today is Mr. Fred Rippey from Meridian. Um, so next up, we'll move on to uh, Mr. Mr. Beck. Would you mind sharing with us kind of your opening comments? Yes, thank you, uh, Sean. I appreciate the chamber uh, putting on this forum. We haven't had hardly any forums or any ways to interact with voters, and this is a wonderful chance for us to do that. And I appreciate uh, uh, the time, energy, and effort that the Meridian Chamber of Commerce, and you particularly, in putting this uh, this forum on. My name is Rod Beck. Um, my way, by way of my personal background, I was born and raised on an Idaho potato farm. Yep, I got up early in the morning and milked cows before I went to school. I've lived uh, in Ada County for 44 years. I've been married to my lovely wife for 46 years. We have six children and we have 17 grandchildren. They don't all live here, some of them do, a bigger share of my children live here, but all my kids were gr graduated from a school in Ada County, uh, from Centennial High School, as a matter of fact. I had the privilege, now some, previously somebody has mentioned that they got to vote for Ronald Reagan in 1984. I actually got to be on the ballot with Ronald Reagan in 1984, and it was a privilege. He's a hero of mine. I, I love everything that Ronald Reagan did. Um, I had the privilege that year of uh, being elected to the Idaho State Senate, and uh, my fellow Republican senators elected me uh, to serve as the Senate Majority Leader. In that role, I interfaced weekly during each session and periodically throughout the year with the governor's office and business and government leaders and education leaders throughout the state. Later, Governor Phil Batt asked me to run the Idaho Housing Agency. In 2016, I served as a chairman of the Idaho Donald Trump for President campaign. In that capacity, I represented Idaho leaders uh, throughout the, count, the country at the National Republican Convention. All these experiences will be valuable uh, resources to draw on in the problem solving ahead with citizens and leaders from all political perspectives and all walks of life. At the same time, I'm a tested conservative leader I will advance a principles-based approach to reduce or freeze property taxes, the property tax burden that 80 county residents now pay towards a smaller, smart government. Now, I was real pleased to hear all these legislators, every everyone talked about we need to reduce property taxes, and they are right. Property taxes on our 80 county residents are expanding at an extra, at a, a huge rate, and we need to stop that. Property taxes are not, an, they're not a, a volunteer tax. They're, they're a tax that, that uh, you have to pay on your house and we need to stop that. We can't, we can't stop that. That's the reason that I supported the, uh, the bill that uh, Representative Mike Moyle put in the legislature to freeze the property taxes this year. And I'm surprised all these legislators are supporting that, was supporting that freeze and we didn't, get it, we didn't get it done. Maybe next year we can work together and get that, get that done to give the citizens of Ada County a property tax relief. Now, corresponding to that is a budget. You have to reduce the budget, which we can do, even though most of the, uh, the operation of the, of the, of the county is, is based on uh, uh, laws that, that they have to fulfill. We don't have to spend all the money that we're, that we're spending. We can cut down on the, on, on the budget, and that's what I will do. And I appreciate uh, this forum again, and uh, let's get on with it. Thank you, Mr. Beck. Um, with that, I'd like to uh, turn it over to our moderator, uh, Ryan, for a question for our Ada County Commissioners. Hello, candidates. Thanks again for being here. Um, get right to the question. Um, according to Compass, Ada County's population will grow from 482,000 to more than 670,000 within the next 20 years. As a commissioner, what will you do today to ensure Ada County has the infrastructure in place to handle that increased population in the future? Is Ada County currently on track to manage growth? If not, what would you do differently? Thank you. Uh, let's see, Mr. Davis is not with us. Uh, Mr. Hallward, would you mind giving your response to that question? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Supi, for uh, the question. Um, we are seeing tremendous growth, not only in Ada County, but in all of Idaho. Um, people have called me the, the kind of the storm warning of Idaho because I've been saying 
that all this growth is coming from Californians, Washingtonians, Oregonians, New Yorkers. Everyone has, has uh, been alerted that Idaho is an amazing place to live. Uh, obviously, we all know that's true. <laughs> so you have uh, many people coming in here. It's, uh, it's growing leaps and bounds. Um, my slogan is build upwards, not outwards. Um, I believe what's happening is Idahoans, they're getting uh, not their, they're not getting a fair shake. They're getting penalized for people from out of state moving into the area. When instead of being penalized with high taxes, which is interesting that that's a main topic in Idaho, strictly because we are a red state, you would think that the Texas taxes would be minimal, but they're not. Um, and with growth becomes higher taxes. Now, in regards to the solution, I would reward Idahoans with lower taxes, no, hopefully do my best, uh, no property uh, taxes. Um, once I'm in office, I will uh, build a volunteer committee to look at every aspect of the growing situation, literally the growing situation, the growth situation, and we will come up with a plan that will reward Idahoans and slow the growth, specifically from out-of-staters, uh, penalizing uh, or impacting uh, out-of-state developers, made uh, three times higher taxes for out-of-state uh, developers. Uh, Idaho companies maybe get uh, first dibs on the bids for, uh, for building. Um, any any uh, one from out-of-state moving in, uh, will pay uh, uh, an entry tax to come in. Uh, and once that is, is heard, the growth will slow tremendously and uh, that'll help relieve it. And also it'll help build the economy because Idaho and companies will be getting uh, the bids on a lot of the infrastructure that will be built. Um, right now there are a lot of, specifically in Eagle, there's a complex there only with 19 tenants at this point but it's uh, over 250 apartment units. Um, you know, we're seeing uh, building everywhere. I went to um, a lady's home in Caldwell. Uh, it was a small farm. Now she's surrounded by brand new, luxurious, single family homes. She lost her view of the city for years that she's had most of her life. She no longer has a view. She looks in her backyard, she sees nothing but homes from miles and miles. It's, um, I don't want to say it's sad to see, but it is sad to see. We need to slow the growth, and these are some ways that we can do it. But until I get into office and build that uh, volunteer uh, committee with some of the best economists in the state, then we can better know how to tackle the issue. And uh, right now, that is the platform, that is the, the launch pad. And once we get that committee going, we'll be able to take off and uh, and know exactly what we need to do to stop this, uh, slow the growth and lower the taxes and help every Idahoan. Thank you, Mr. Howard. Um, Ms. McFarland. Okay, so uh, what I'm seeing after being here for over 30 years is, is the density seems to be the issue for me. Uh, we didn't have a huge population of apartment buildings until pretty recently. And I think that is going to be the answer to managing the growth. Ada County, unincorporated Ada County, of course, doesn't have a whole lot of that going on. Uh, it's more in the cities. I think Eagle's been impacted greatly with, with these high density housing units. I see a lot of it happening in Boise as well. And it really comes down to planning. We have to plan accordingly with our comprehensive plans and, and approach it on a density basis. That's the only fair way to treat property owners. If you have property and you're ready to sell and develop and that's possibly your, your retirement, you have every right to sell and develop your property. And you should have a heads up what is ex the expectation within that community. And that community should be managing the growth within itself with uh, lower densities. We need to get rid of some of these higher densities and play fair with property owners as well. 
Thank you, Mr. McFarland. Um, Ms. Morrison. Thank you very much. Um, so most of the growth is occurring within the city limits and uh, each city and ACHD have the jurisdiction to make decisions that uh, on those things that accompany growth. Um, since the county uh, jurisdiction includes each city and ACHD, I think that the appropriate role for the county to play is uh, to facilitate those big picture conversations with the cities and ACHD that help us figure out how we're going to deal with this. Um, our investment in infrastructure is not keeping up with the explosive growth that we've experienced in the past um, number of years. We had silos that existed between cities and the county and ACHD. Uh, there's a great need to uh, coordinate our visions. Um, we don't have an overall vision. We have uh, six cities with separate visions and ACHD in the county. Um, it was tried a number of year, years ago to develop a coordinated vision for growth and development. It was called the Blueprint Planning Process. Some of you, I'm sure, remember that. Um, uh, at a recent growth conversation, um, I heard some elected saying, you know, the blueprint didn't work. This is ridiculous. How, how, uh, how do they expect that we're going to do this? I didn't hear anybody say, what happens if we don't? I think we are at the, at the point where it is critical that we stay at the table, that we work out solutions, that we figure out funding to infrastructure. Uh, and I think the county and I can play a big role in that uh, to bringing people to the table and staying there with them uh, while we hammer out solutions. Cities should develop the way that cities uh, citizens ask them to and want them to. There should not be regulations, but I think an overall vision can help us get to where we need to be. Also working with the legislature to figure out infrastructure is very important funding for that. Thank you, Mrs. Morrison. Appreciate your, your comments. Uh, Mr. Beck. Well, thank you. Uh, that is a good question. We have experienced uh, large, large growth in, uh, in Ada County. And uh, it, it's been noted that uh, most of the growth has occurred in the cities and not in the unincorporated areas, which means it's the city's responsibility. But the Ada County uh, government can cooperate and should cooperate with the cities and the highway district to make sure that the proper infrastructure is in place. And I'm a free market conservative. I don't think that it's the government's place to be stopping or hindering growth. We ought to do what we can to make sure that it's uh, proper, that we have the proper transportation systems, that we have sewer and the, and the other kinds of infrastructure that we need. And, and we have ordinances, uh, planning and zoning ordinances to prevent certain types of growth. But we shouldn't, in my view, have, have growth that, that will or have, have restrictions. We did that uh, at one point in time in Ada County. We had two commissioners that wanted to stop growth, and they did that. And it was pretty hard. It took us years to get over that. That was in the late uh, uh, 70s. But we, it took us a, a lot, of, a long time to get over that. We don't want to stop growth because you won't appreciate what happens to the values of your homes. You won't appreciate how the, the affordability of, uh, of homes. It will be difficult and it'll be, we shouldn't do that. But we should plan properly. I do agree with that. We should plan to make sure the infrastructure is safe. We are the only county in the entire United States that has a countywide highway district. We're the only county in the state of Idaho that has, uh, uh, that has it's a countywide highway district. We need to work cooperatively with the highway district and with the cities to properly plan for the growth that will occur. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beck. And um, as we wish, we would always wish we had more time for, for questions. I uh, want to remind everyone to please look to the Chamber's website for the complete list of questionnaire as, as Representative Vanderwald uh, mentioned that it's uh, quite lengthy. So our candidates did take the time to answer those questions. You can find out more about them. Uh, with that, I, I know we've lost a few of our uh, panelists. So I'm gonna go down a, a list here that I have of who's still online with us and get some closing remarks from everyone that has participated today. Uh, I'd start with uh, Senator Grove. Would you mind uh, sharing with us your closing remarks? Just a couple of 
you're you're muted, Mr. Crow. There you go. Okay, thanks again to, for the opportunity. Thank the chamber for this. I think it's a great forum. Too bad we didn't have more time. Uh, let me just close. Uh, endorsements have been mentioned. Let me just mention that uh, I have the endorsement of Governor Brad Little, Governor Bush Otter, also former uh, candidate uh, Tommy Alquist, uh, Senator Mike Crapo, and obviously the Speaker of the House and the Senate Pro Tem uh, on this primary. It's unusual to get endorsements in primary. They all come out on the, on the general, but uh, I appreciate those. Also endorsed by uh, the Idaho uh, Chooses Life. I also co-sponsored an anti-abortion bill that passed and uh, was signed by the governor. Also endorsed by NRA. Uh, let me just uh, mention uh, the three, just in summary, uh, again, a CPA, small business owner by profession, in the Valley the, my entire life, basically. Um, and regarding the three topics of transportation, I feel your pain. Uh, when we travel, it seems impossible sometimes to get anywhere, particularly in rush hour on Highway 44 and, and uh, Eagle Road and Chinden are in my district, also Highway 16, we need to uh, get that funded with Garvey bonds or whatever to get that thing extended to the freeway, which will help uh, decrease the, uh, the load on Eagle Road. On uh, education, again, I mentioned I serve on the Joint Finance Appropriation Committee. One of my assignments on that committee is education. And so I'm involved in uh, scrutinizing, reviewing the entire education budget, both public and uh, higher ed. That's more than two and a half billion dollars, a major, major effort. And uh, I'm pleased to spend the time there. Uh, in the education, uh, I've been a proponent of the uh, career ladder that's helped our teachers raise their wages. I have paid, I have voted for that in, in the past, also in the last session, and continue to uh, encourage the opportunity to properly uh, fund our uh, public schools. I also recognize the need of individuals to choose what they feel is appropriate for their own children if they want private or uh, homeschool. As we look at, uh, uh, in conclusion, I just say that uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve. It's been a wonderful experience to serve in that Senate position. Look forward to doing it again. The fact that I'm chair, a vice chair of the tax committee gives me an opportunity to move things. And being on Joint Finance Appropriation Committee, which is a key budget uh, committee, will have to deal with all the revenue challenges this next session. And I also serve on Judiciary and Rules Committee. So I look forward to that. I appreciate your vote on uh, May 19th, absentee ballot and clear to June 2nd in the Republican primary. Thank you so much, Scott Grove. Bye. Thank you, Senator Grove. Uh, next up uh, for closing remarks, uh, Senator Barrett. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity you've given me today. I'm very concerned about the controls and restrictions that have been put on our businesses particularly small businesses, and the unpredictable economic fallout from their loss of income, loss of employees, and even the potential closure of businesses. We must be vigilant to ensure government is limited, regulations are minimal, and taxes are low. Those are proven ingredients for a free and prosperous society. I will always support the Second Amendment which protects the right to keep and bear arms. We should never forget the countries that have fallen because the people were disarmed. I have earned the endorsements of both the NRA and the Second Amendment Alliance, and I'm proud of that. I am also proud that the Idaho Farm Bureau endorses me. It's a pleasure to work with them closely as I serve on the Ag Committee. I also serve on the Health and Welfare Committee. And I am strongly pro-life, fighting at all times for the unborn. I've been supported by Idaho Chooses Life and the Family Policy Alliance. I have a lot of other supporters. If you go to my website, reginabayerforidaho.com, you'll see them there or you'll be able to um, go to my Facebook page from that. Um, I wanna thank the Chamber for all you do in consideration of our state. Please come to talk to me anytime. We need to work together to preserve our way of life. I would appreciate your vote in this primary election. May God bless America and the great state of Idaho. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Burr. Uh, Mrs. Webb. 
Thank you for your great questions. I hope that you'll take the chance to read all of, all of the answers um, to those questions. I'm a conservative. I'm not a fan of overregulation or overtaxation or wasteful spending. Um, I would love to learn and, and to um, listen to um, and serve the residents of District 21. Idaho is a great place to live. I know we can work together to keep it wet that way. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Webb. Um, now I'd like to move on to uh, Mrs. Manglish. Um, would you mind giving us your closing remarks? Hi. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that I'm really grateful to my constituents in my area for giving me a chance. Um, I. I was told when I first moved to Idaho 13 years ago, um, if good people stand by and do nothing, we get the same results. Um, so I'm hoping that voters give me a chance and give me the opportunity to make a difference in my district. Um, I think that a lot of the newer people coming into our legislature, into the county and possibly the city, um, will bring about some new thought processes, some new options for what we already are doing. And I'm, I'm really thankful for that. Um, I did not accept any endorsements. I didn't fill out any surveys. I believe that the people's voice should be heard and it needs to be, um, those groups are awesome, but I didn't want to take money from any special interest groups just because I signed a flyer or will support their legislation. So I want to be a voice for the people where I'm at and I want to get my community involved at the state level. So my goal is to just be here to serve our community the way I have in the advocacy work I did. And thank you for the opportunity um, for sharing on this platform. Thank you, thank you. Um, I believe uh, Representative Palmer has had to leave us. I uh, don't see him online. So uh, with that, let's move on to, uh, do we still have Mr. Furch on the line with us? Yes. All right, go ahead with your closing comments. Well, again, thank you for the forum. Um, I would like to say that one of the beauties of a citizen legislature is the opportunity to have diversity in experience. And I would suggest that in this race, I bring the most diversity and experience uh, to the table. You know, going all the way back to joining the army as a medic when I was 17 and still in high school, um, you know, and having that background, having worked in emergency rooms and clinics and driving ambulances and stuff, um, and working with, uh, currently working with veterans referred from the VA, I have a passion and an insight that I think makes me a bit uh, more uniquely qualified. I've been a participant in and affiliated with the Republican Party my entire uh, time here, as mentioned before, very actively involved uh, in, in the party politics, holding numerous positions. I, I've been a property owner. I've done uh, developments and had interactions with the regulating authorities, building departments, code enforcement, all these aspects. I've been to county tax uh, hearings, um, basically arguing over property values and so forth. 27-year healthcare provider, employer, um, you know, business owner, having dealt with all those aspects of keeping people employed and uh, dealing with bureaucracies and regulation. And I think that that makes me uniquely qualified and gives me a passion to help solve and remedy some of the things that we've uh, talked about here today in the Idaho State Legislature. So very good, thanks again. Thank you, Mr. Furch. Um, next up, um, Closing remarks, uh, Mr. Hudson. Go ahead, Hudson. Eli, are you still with us? There you go. All right, there we go. Just one moment here. 
So I uh, just wanted to thank you again, Sean, and uh, thanks to the Meridian Chamber um, for having us today. It's been a, a really great opportunity here. I've enjoyed engaging with you guys. Um, and thank you for tuning in and listening. Um, like you, I chose to raise my family here in District 21. I believe this is a, a wonderful place to raise a family, to grow a business, and to engage with our community here. And you know, we are facing some major challenges right now. Um, they range from the immense population growth that we're seeing to uh, issues like healthcare transparency. And I believe in the people in this district to provide the input that's going to get us through these uh, difficult challenges. And we're Idahoans. We're problem solvers, we're conservatives, and we're hard workers, and we will get this done. But it is gonna take a representative at the state house who's ready to engage with you and to make sure that your voice is heard. Um, we cannot afford to see the Democrats encroaching on yet another district and uh, further extending their reach throughout Ada County. I don't think that electing, uh, you know, someone who may be relying on insider uh, connections or, you know, kind of um, working with the good old boys uh, downtown is gonna be the right answer in this particular case. I'm ready to get to work for you. Um, I want to engage with you. I know I've met many of you. You can reach me directly at any time at 208-870-9983. That's my personal cell phone. And I'd also encourage you to go to elihodson.com. You can gather some more of my ideas there and learn a little bit more about me. Um, I'm a common sense pro-business, pro-family conservative, and I uh, look forward to working on your behalf and um, you know acting as your employee at the State House. And I really appreciate your time today. Thank you, Eli. Appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Um, yeah. Next up is uh, Mr. Bruce. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I would like to say thank you to everyone. Times have changed. We need people who will make decisions now. Too many issues fail to be solved every year. The next year or to a committee that bears no fruit. It's not about the people coming to us with problems, but we need people actively present in the community to understand. People have lost faith in elected officials, but we can change that. The problems are changed by people who show up, and I will be resolute in my work for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bruce. Uh, and finally, up for uh, Mr. Uh, Re Representative Vanderwood uh, had to leave, but so we'll go on to uh, Representative Monks. Are you still with us, sir? Thank you. Appreciate you having us. Um, just a couple things to, to wrap up. Um, I am really proud of the record that I've had in the legislature. Just this last year, um, I worked on for a, a problem that has plagued Meridian and CUNA for, for 20 years. It took me four years to get it completed in the state house and get it signed by the governor. But it was uh, not a very exciting issue, but it's the sales tax distribution formula. And it adversely affects cities and counties that were growing quickly, like a Meridian and a CUNA. Um, this bill is projected to return over a million dollars in the first year to Meridian and CUNA. That's money that the cities can use to lower property taxes or, or whatever they choose to do with that money. Um, that was something I was really proud of. Sometimes politics isn't the, isn't um, uh, isn't easy. It doesn't take. Uh, it's not something you can fix quickly. Sometimes, as in this case, it took over four years. I've got other bills that I've been working on now for eight years and still haven't quite got there. There, um, but that's okay. It does take time. Our process is supposed to take time. It's not supposed to be easy. Um, I'm willing to put in that work and that effort to get those things done. Uh, this last year, also was uh, proud to sponsor the Idaho Patient Act. Um, that um, reduced. Um, the, I guess it, it helped rein in some of our debt collectors for medical debt collection where they were taking some taking advantage of individuals. And I was able to sponsor that uh, throughout the house. Really proud of that. That was also signed into law. Um, we need somebody who can get things done there. And I have a track record of getting things done. And I'm proud of my record. I encourage anybody to look at my record. Um, and uh, I'm uh, also most excited about being able to help people with their problems. I had a guy who, who couldn't get his unemployment insurance checks um, to him fast enough because of this coronavirus and I worked with the governor and the director to get those things done. That's that's the fun part of our job when we get to help our constituents. I, I continue to do that 
um, and we'll continue to do that. And I'm thankful for the opportunity that the residents of District 22 have given me, and I will continue to work hard there to, to represent them in a manner that hopefully they're proud of. Um, thank you, Sean. Appreciate you putting this together, and, and um, we'll see you soon, I hope. Thank you, Representative Muntz. Thank you. Uh, now we're moving on to the closing comments for our 80 County Commissioner candidates. Uh, Mr. Hallworth. Jason, comma. There we go. Unmuted myself. How's that, Sean? Yep, I can um, hear you. Excellent. Um, I just want to th say thank you to the Meridian Chamber for uh, this forum. Um, I also want to let people know to uh, like my page on Facebook. Thank you for your uh, comment about not uh, shifting. You know, County uh, Commissioner District I've 1. Um, please like my page. It's very informative. Um, I'd also like to um, say go to my website, howarthforada.com, where there's also a lot of uh, nice information for everybody. Um, I also want to say that uh, I have the most important and the best endorsement of all, and that endorsement is of the people of the county to get the job done, to do what they need done to secure their lives and their family, specifically in this dramatic, tragic time of COVID-19. And also, I want to speak to the small business owners, sp specifically Meridian Chamber. I am also a small business owner. As mentioned before, I own two small businesses. I'm going through the same thing you are. I've gone through the same experiences you have gone through, and that we are going through these experiences together. I want to be there for you to help rein in the problems with these experiences we're having now and for all small business owners in the county to be successful because I have a special interest in that, obviously. And this forum is also um, is the perfect example of uh, the two campaigns in this primary. My opponent is not here. I am here for you. I will always be here for you. I'll always have an open door policy. You can call me anytime, 24 seven, with any situation that you have, and I'll be happy to help in any way possible, because that's what running for office is all about. It's about helping your fellow neighbor, and everyone in Ada County is my neighbor, and we're all neighbors. And once again, I wanna thank uh, the chamber again, and I look forward to uh, seeing everyone in the future. And uh, thank you uh, very much, Sean. It's uh, much appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Howard. Uh, next up is Ms. McFarland. Hello, thank you so much. Um, I think that what I bring to the table is uh, unique qualifications in that for one, I'm not just walking, talking the talk, I'm walking the walk on these budgets. When I was Eagle City Council President and Eagle City uh, member, um, I served in 2011 to 2015. Our first budget, we actually cut by 20%. I've heard a whole lot of talk about cutting budgets. The fact of the matter is, I know how to cut a budget. I know what's broken in the Ada County budget and it's the system of taking a budget from last year and applying 3% growth to it. There are individual programs that cost a lot of money that should not be carried over to the next budget, but they are. And what that, what that creates is surplus. And Ada County has an awful lot of surplus. Let me give you a couple examples. Uh, they spent $15 million on a parking garage uh, with a, uh, a private company. It hasn't been built yet, but I don't know how Ada County commissioners can come in and not only raise your taxes, take foregones to the tune of $11 million in the last couple of years and have, 11, have $15 million in surplus funding to come in and just write a check without the benefit of the taxpayers to vote on a bond. I'm, I'm offended by that. I think the taxpayers should have every right to decide how we're going to spend money on, on big events such as that. Um, I've written budgets. Like I said, we cut the budget in Eagle by 20%. Five years later, I've been gone five years. The Eagle City budget went from seven and a half million to 
over 17 and a half million. It is more than doubled in five years. So we've got to figure out where is all this money going and why are we so hungry for, for the taxpayer's money? I hope that you'll vote for me. I'm going to walk the walk for you. And um, if you'd like to call me, I'm happy to talk to anybody about any of these issues. I can be reached at 208-440-1252. Please go get your ballot. Thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate you so much. Thank you, Ms. McFarland. Uh, next up, uh, Ms. Morrison. Thank you, Sean. Uh, uh, my kudos to you and Ryan who have, uh, have wrangled this rodeo pretty darn well. Um, thank you to the chamber, to my fellow candidates and the voters. Uh, I hope you'll take the time to read our responses to the questionnaire. I am disappointed we couldn't talk about property taxes, but uh, maybe next time. Tough times call for tough people with relevant experience, um, leaders who have made decision at the county level. I'm the only one running who does and who has. I've served as a county commissioner or county supervisor if you prefer. Uh, you say potato, I say potato, it's the same thing. Um, Meridian, I am asking for your vote. I plan to preserve the best things about living here for our children and our grandchildren uh, all the while addressing budgetary tax growth and public safety issues facing us. Um, I want to represent you on the commission. Based on my experience and relationship building skills, I'm endorsed by many local officials and community leaders, among them former mayor of, of Meridian, Tammy DeBeard, uh, Meridian City Council member Jessica Peralt, Sheriff Steve Bartlett, Prosecuting Attorney Jan Bennett, ACHD Commissioner Kent Goldthorpe, Tommy uh, and Shanna Alquist, and many others. I love this county. I want to help provide relief from burdens and property taxes, and I want to help chart the course for a better future for all of our children. I want to help Ada County avoid the mistakes made by other states and communities, and I want the best for Ada County. Unlike some of my competitors, I wasn't born here, but this may surprise you. Neither was H.C. Riggs, the founding father of Ada County. H.C. Uh, Riggs was a county supervisor in Yolo County, California, and Oregon before he moved to Ada County. I think he did okay by Ada County, and so will I. I'm a conservative Republican. I have been since the first day I could register to vote at the age of 18. Thank you again. Please visit my page to learn more about me and vote for me, please, by June 2nd. My website is murisonforada.com. And again, thank you, Sean. Thank you for participating in our event today. Um, Mr. Beck, you're up. Your, your last closing remark. Did you unmute, unmute me? Oh, there right, you gotcha. go. You're ready to go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank the uh, Meridian Chamber of Commerce for this forum. I thought it was a great forum. It seemed to be a, a pleasant. We didn't have a lot of uh, uh, negative, any any negatives going on, and I appreciate that about the politics of uh, of Ada County. Additionally, uh, it's, it's going to, to be difficult to do difficult things, and I want to give some uh, some uh, examples of how I've done difficult things. I hope everyone is enjoying getting your Republican ballot. A number of years ago, that would be impossible to do. You couldn't get your Republican ballot because the state of Idaho prohibited it. The state of Idaho required that allowed Democrats to vote in Republican primaries. I was the region chairman in the Idaho Republican Party and I wanted to change that. And so I set about to, to build a path to get that change. It took us five years. We had powerful interest groups opposing us, including uh, Governor Butch Otter and including some legislative leaders. We had a lot of support from legislative leaders as well, but we didn't have enough pass to pass a law. So we actually had to sue the state of, uh, of Idaho and we've got that done. So now you, you you got the privilege of having your Republican ballot come to you and, and, and we have assurances that Democrats don't vote in the Republican primary. That was a difficult thing to do. I had to take on some powerful people, and that's what I can do in taming the budget of Ada County. I'll take on some powerful people. I'll follow it through the end. We will reduce our budgets. In fact, I'm calling on the Ada County commissioners right now 
you can reduce your budgets currently. The state of Idaho has, as uh, Governor Lil, he has uh, announced he's going to hold back uh, $100 million from uh, the education budgets. And he's asked his other departments to hold back some money. I think we ought to do the same thing with Ada County right now. We're going to have some difficulties in this in this pandemic, and uh, our economy needs to needs to get rebuilt. By the way, I apologize for my hair. Governor Lil hasn't given me any permission to go to go get my hair cut, so hopefully he'll do that soon. If you want to find out more about me, go to my website, Rod Beck for number four Idaho.com. I thank you very much, and uh, I'd ask for your vote. Thank you, Mr. Beck. Appreciate you uh, taking the time to be with us today. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, wrap it up and say thank you to all of our participants uh, that uh, got to uh, share today uh, their candidacy and uh, their their thoughts on uh, why they should be elected uh, to represent you here uh, in Ada County and the districts uh, surrounding Meridian. Uh, with that, I just want to kind of close and mention again that additional questions and answers from the candidates are available for public review on the meridianchamber.org website. Um, and remember, your absentee ballots must be requested by May 19th, and they have to be returned to the county clerk's office by June 2nd. Um, with that, I'd just like to say thank you to uh, Ryan Tuppy. Um, um, for uh, helping moderate this event. Thank you to the Meridian Chamber of Commerce Government Affairs Committee. And uh, please keep Meridian healthy and open for business. Thank you all very much for joining us today. This broadcast will be posted as soon as we can get it processed. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Hey. I don't know the platform they're using, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. So appreciate you in the studio. Thanks. Okay. All right. Did you offer Rhonda a drink? Did she have? <laughs> <laughs>